Cuspid Valve Repair. Eric. Uh, thank you. Um, I think it's important for us as surgeons to be involved in all of these catheter-based uh, therapies that she'll be discussing this afternoon. And I'd like to discuss um, some uh, tricuspid valve repair techniques. Um, tricuspid insufficiency is really a largely untreated disease. If we look at the United States, there's over 2.5 million patients that suffer from tricuspid insufficiency. With the incidence of moderate or severe TR in the U.S. being 220,000 and over 300,000 in the EU. Nevertheless, we only perform 10,000 operations for tricuspid insufficiency uh, yearly in the United States, of which 90% are a concomitant procedure. That suggests only 10 or 1,000 operations are performed for isolated tricuspid insufficiency, uh, which is a very small proportion of the patients with uh, this disease process. Annuloplasty is the most common uh, repair method, um, but it's often considered a very high risk procedure when performed uh, as an isolated procedure. There's a number of anatomical challenges when considering the transcatheter uh, methods. Number one, the anatomy is highly variable. Uh, the annulus is large. It's elliptical, non-planar, and non-calcified. So for, uh, uh, for a landing zone, this is challenging. There's three fragile leaflets, which tend to be more fragile than the mitral. The complex uh, chordal structures and papillary muscles are even more complex than the mitral side. And there's a number of very important structures that are important around the tricuspid annulus, the AV node bundle of Hiss right coronary artery, the coronary sinus, the vena cava, as well as the RVOT. Compared to the LV, the RV is very thin, and there's challenging visualization because we're just not used to looking at it as we are the mitral valve. There's a number of percutaneous approaches which are under development. Um, all of these uh, are really very um, in the development phase, what we could probably say at this point, um, and there's probably worldwide less than 200 implants in total. Uh, so I'd like to go through some of the repair techniques. This is the tri-cinch device. Um, this can be placed uh, firmly through a 24 French dry, gore dry seal sheath. It's an 18 French delivery system. And this is really reproducing a K by cuspidization procedure. Um, there's a corkscrew anchor and a self-expanding stent that are placed through two separate uh, devices that are connected and a dacron band connecting them. And this is really uh, placing that screw to pull the um, anterior portion of the annulus down towards the posterior and then um, securing that in the inferior vena cava. So this is a uh, video um, of, or a simulation of the, um, uh, the procedure. Here's the uh, corkscrew going into the annulus, uh, just there at the anterior posterior commissure. This is the connecting device that is used to pull it down onto the stent. You can see the annulus being pulled there. It can be um, confirmed on TE to make sure that it's appropriately placed and then the stent is deployed securing it. It's also important uh, to know exactly where the right coronary artery is so coronary angiography should be performed and you can see the stent or sorry the, um, the anchor is not uh, obviously in the right coronary artery which would be problematic. There's been eight patients reported um, there's uh, device stability in three patients out at six months, and there's symptomatic improvement. Although if we look at the TEE uh, before and after, there's still significant TR that is left. Uh, this is uh, another device, the Trialine, which is uh, uh, similar to the Mitraline device. Uh, this is placed by two eight French IJ accesses. And uh, there's a number of catheters that are used to deliver radiofrequency wire into the um, annulus of the tricuspid valve. Uh, this is what it looks like. So the, um, there's already one pledgeted uh, stitch already applied in the septal posterior uh, commissure. Uh, this is the device, the catheter coming through, placing a pledget in the uh, anterior posterior commissure. The suture is then brought out and another device is brought in that allows the two um, commissures to be pulled together and then locked into position. And again, here's the bicuspid valve uh, that is uh, resulting from that. Uh, so again, this uh, trialine procedure is based on the K bicuspidization procedure, closing the annulus at the posterior leaflet and reducing the annular size as well. Uh, it's a transjugular approach, as I've mentioned. Uh, there's two studies, uh, one in the US and one in Europe. Uh, these are the SCOUT studies uh, showing early feasibility IDE, which is currently enrolling in the U.S., 
first 15 patients have been uh, showing promising results to date with no adverse events and improvements in both tricuspid insufficiency as well as their functional capacity. And the SCOUT-2 is a multi-center EU study which is uh, also uh, enrolling. Uh, Millipede device is, at least uh, for us as surgeons, probably the most uh, interesting one. It's a percutaneous, uh, essentially a ring that's being placed. Uh, there's a number of screws. There's actually eight um, screws that are placed here, um, first uh, deployed into the annulus, and then uh, there's annular reduction that occurs. This is based um, primarily for the mitral valve, but it's being applied for the tricuspid valve also. Um, this is uh, mostly been performed in uh, animals. There's been two human implants reported to date um, as uh, concomitant procedures with the mitral valve. Uh, I don't have any videos, but you can see here in this panel, this is the mitral valve, this is the tricuspid valve. Of note, the screw that is close to the conduction system is not deployed so as to avoid conduction abnormalities. Uh, there has been a 42 and 45 percent annular reduction in diameter and at least in this uh, still f um, shot here, there was no tricuspid insufficiency, and that was out to six months. Uh, the next device that we can discuss is uh, the former device. This is uh, from Edwards. It's a foam-filled polymer balloon that is essentially providing additional <laughs> coaptation surface for the native tricuspid valve leaflets to close against. And this device is placed through the axillary um, or subclavian vein. There's a small um, subclavicular pocket that's placed much like a pacemaker. There's an anchor uh, at the uh, end that allows us to be anchored to the right ventricular apex and then the device is optimally placed at the level of the regurgitant jet and as I mentioned this is providing a new coaptation surface and the early um, feasibility trials uh, outside the U.S. as well as the U.S. safety and efficacy trials are currently recruiting. So those are the, uh, the newer devices. There's also MitraClip um, for performing <coughs> actual leaflet repairs, um, obviously uh, designed for the mitral valve. Uh, this is a patient that um, I was involved in repairing uh, both the mitral and the tricuspid valve at her own center. It was a 77-year-old woman with severe mitral and tricuspid insufficiency. She was really an extreme NYHA class 4 heart failure. Uh, couldn't even do a six-minute walk test, had orthopnea and refractory peripheral edema. She was extremely frail and clearly not a surgical candidate. Uh, you can see over in the still echo, just absolutely torrential tricuspid insufficiency. So after completing a uh, mitral clip repair of the mitral valve, we then pulled the guide back into the right atrium and we left about two and a half centimeters uh, of guide in. This was above the leaf, uh, sorry, two and a half, we left the guide two and a half centimeters above the leaflets, which is adequate for the uh, clip to come out of the guide. We then oriented the, uh, the uh, uh, arms of the mitra clip so that they're perpendicular to the line of coaptation uh, on TE, and then this was also confirmed on 2D echo. Now you'll notice how the, um, the shaft of the device is hugging the septum, and this provides a uh, poor trajectory for grasping the leaflets, so we corrected this angle of attack uh, with lateral movement, uh, changing the AP knob as well as the plus minus knob, so a little bit of alternative maneuvers compared to a standard mitra clip, and then grasped uh, the leaflets closed and assessed as we would in uh, the standard fashion, and then we deployed this first uh, clip. And we ended up applying a total of uh, three clips closing the, uh, the gap between the anterior and the septal leaflet. You can see the mitral clips over on this side, and uh, there was still um, uh, arguably severe TR left. However, compared to the torrential TR originally, um, there was a significant improvement. Uh, the vena contractor was reduced from 2.1 to 0.7 centimeters with a valve area of 3.8 centimeters squared. Um, there's still one other alternative, and this is cable valve implantation. This is essentially creating a single right, uh, right chamber. It can reduce the backflow into the uh, visceral veins and improve symptoms. Uh, the challenges with this um, are compared to regular uh, transcatheter aortic valve replacement, and even for the mitral valve, there's no uh, calcium in the cava. Uh, the compliance of the cava is extreme. <coughs> There's also a very large size variability, and they do tend to dilate with tricuspid insufficiency as well. And importantly, we have to be very uh, concerned and aware of hepatic venous inflow, and there are also changes with RV function. So there's a, a couple of techniques available for this. Uh, one is to use a standard Tavar valve. However, 
the IVC would need to be prepared uh, because the IVC will be too large and too uh, distensible for a, for a um, standard TAVI valve implant. So this is prepared by placing one or potentially even two stents into the inferior vena cava and then deploying a balloon expandable valve. Um, so this is one option. There's also uh, specifically designed uh, caval <coughs> valves, the trick valve. Uh, these are self-expanding valves that can be landed uh, either in just the IVC alone or in some cases into the SVC as well. The advantage is that uh, the landing zone does not need to be prepared as they are designed to land in the cava and there are multiple size appropriate valves that are available. Uh, I won't go into this device. There are still a few other devices available. Uh, this is the Triapta. It's an interesting concept, perhaps a little bit scary as surgeons. Um, this is placed through the femoral vein going through the right atrial appendage and actually going all the way around the base of the heart. Uh, there's really not a surgical representation of this, um, but it's an interesting concept and we'll have to see how this develops. So in conclusion, there is a cl a very clearly a need for percutaneous uh, tricuspid valve repair technology. There's a, an enormous treatment gap. Virtually none of the patients with severe symptomatic TR are being treated surgically at this point in time. However, there is uh, significant challenges to technological development, but the early devices at this stage do show promise. Well, thank you. <laughs>